Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. This is Tohini from South Bay, California and I welcome you today. So anyone tuning in for the first time, this is where we talk about everything AI, mostly for computer vision. So in this video, uh, I am actually going to be responding to some of my subscribers who've been requesting an update video on one of the existing code bases that I have released uh, you know, a few months back, and that is on multi-class semantic segmentation using units. So in that case, I was showing retinal images and how you can actually do multi-class semantic segmentation. And I have seen that some of you have been getting errors in replicating it for your own data set. So benchmarking and replicating existing work is super important. And that's why I will be showing all of the steps using Colab. So if you know any of you don't have GPU on your computer, so you can easily just you know invoke a, a Colab instance and be able to follow all of this with me. Um, that is the intention here. Uh, mm -hmm. If you know content like this is uh, of interest to you, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. Now, getting straight into this code base that I talked about. So for unit. Three things or three considerations will you know, will ensure that your you know code is bug free. First off, you need to understand that for UNET, you need to pass two paths, and one path is for that of the images, and the other path is that for the ground truth. So GT, and you will see this you know mentioned a lot of times in the GitHub as well as on the code. GT actually means ground truth. So the ground truth in this case is also an image. So understand the, the major difference between UNET or semantic segmentation algorithms and any other classification algorithm is that the input is an image and the output is also an image. And that's the reason why the, the, the data set is, is passed with images and ground truth both together. The second consideration is about GPU. So do you have GPU access on your computer or not? If not, you might have to change your runtime on Colab to GPU so that you know, your, your, your steps can, can keep going. And if you're not using you know, Colab Pro, then one consideration that you should make is your batch size should be smaller and the number of epochs should also be smaller. Otherwise, you might get an OOM error. So that's out of memory error, which tells you that you know, the GPU is already exhausted. So second consideration is your processor. And third and the final consideration is that of your loss function. So what is the loss function that you should use in this case? So if you go through the code, I will be showing you that, um, you know, there's this dice coefficient loss, but also there is cross uh, entropy. So there is, you know, categorical cross entropy or binary cross entropy. So in this data set, what I will be showing you is how to use both uh, in order to, you know, get to your final uh, outcome. So these are the three considerations. If you keep them, you should have error-free code. So let's get started. So today I wanted to talk about some of the questions that I've been getting about errors that people have been facing in replicating this particular GitHub, which is unit for multi-class semantic segmentation. In order to help uh, you know, the, the whole running process, what I have now added is this new folder called the Google Colab code. And in this, uh, you know, code, I have actually added all of the files that I will be reviewing in this video that should help you replicate exactly all of the, you know, working of this code from the beginning to the end. So please do download this particular code and follow it in Google Colab if you do want to, you know, process this particular, uh, um, you know, semantic segmentation or multi-class semantic segmentation problem. So just to show you right now, I'm on my Google Drive and I have two different folders, one containing the code, just the code like uh, whatever is downloaded from, from GitHub. And then I have this other folder, which is the DIRETTB v1 uh, data set. And I talk about this data set in this uh, GitHub repo itself. And I mention how the data set has to be stripped out because there are 89 images, but I'm using only 27 images to train and the remaining are all for test. But there's a certain way that I've given how you should organize the, the data set. And this is where I believe most of the, uh, my viewers were having issues. So what I have done now is I have inbuilt all of this folder formation within the code. So all you need to do is just run the code and all of these folders will automatically form themselves. So I just wanted to show you that I have not created any new folders. It is just the v one data set as downloaded. And uh, inside images, you will see the ground truth, the fundus masks, and the fundus images. So what I 
I will be doing is running everything from scratch. As a first step, we first have to generate ground truth or the, you know, the three class ground truth. In, in this case, um, I'm calling it three class because I'm generating RGB images out of them. And R represents the red lesions. The green plane represents the the, the bright lesions and the blue represents everything which is the background right so what i have already done is i have in my google drive created this one folder which is called unit multi-class and inside that i have kept these two folders which is my dir etdb1 and the code so this is the structure from which i'm starting so all of the code is resides in this inside this and all of the data resides under this dir etdb v1 data set now what I will do is I will start by loading my, my, my drive. Once I authenticate, my Google Drive will be uh, now loaded onto this collab. And then after that, what I will be doing is I'll be pointing it to the resources folder. So inside DB1, there is this resources folder. So if you just download the diarity db1 data set, you know, the only thing you will have to change is the name of this particular uh, you know, folder, whatever you might want to call it. So if you just change that, everything else remains just exactly the same. Now, this is where all of the folder structure is getting created. So if, uh, you know, train and test folders were not, did not exist, now they will get created. And then finally, this is the place where uh, I'm creating this, you know, multi-class uh, ground truth. And now as soon as I invoke this particular code, you will see that it will start creating, uh, you know, the, the images. So in order to see it, if I go inside, uh, you know, DB1, inside resources, now you see there are these two folders created, which is train and test. You see this folder called GT. If you go to this and now you'll be able to see all of the, you know, the thumbnails of, of all of these images. So if I just make them a little larger, you see these become the ground truth images that are currently getting, you know, processed inside this collab file right now and getting saved. So these are the ground truth images, which we will then use to train our unit model. What you need to do is, um, you know, you need to partition it into the train and test folders. And that is exactly what the last part of this code is doing. So this is going to ensure that all of the, uh, you know, files that is inside in this, this GT folder now get copied into the, uh, you know, into the train slash GT and test slash uh, GT. So here you see, now uh, you will have created this train and test. And if you go inside this train and inside this ground truth, you will now see uh, the ground truth images have been copied. So you don't have to really create any more folders anymore. Uh, this code is supposed to do this for you. All right, now that we have uh, completed, uh, you know, generated the generating the, the folder structure, the next thing what we have to do is we have to start running the, uh, you know, actual unit model. So let's just start uh, stepping through uh, all of these, uh, you know, code here. One thing that I did want to mention is you need GPU access in this case. So in this case, you can actually do view resources and uh, you can do change run type. In this case, I've already, uh, you know, accepted it, it to be a GPU, a backend. If you do not have GPU, it's going to take a lot of time to run. So ensure whenever you, if you're using Colab to uh, enable GPU access in this case. Uh, uh, another thing, I'm actually using Colab Pro, but again, if you do not have, if you're just using the regular version, then that would work as well. So first of all, um, you know, I'm going to point it to the direction where all of the code is, is situated. And this is because I need this particular code model depth for. So um, the unit models uh, actually are designed and kept within model depth three and four. You do not have to copy any code here. It just as is, as long as, you know, the, the path uh, is correct, it will automatically read this particular, um, you know, file from the location. So that's all you do your image size is 512 by 512 and then you know you just step through uh, all of these uh, you know helper functions and finally this is the place where the running starts so now that you've already loaded all of the the, the code the next thing is now you change the path to where the um, where the training data is is located and um, you know if the, the augmentations do not exist then you create it this is to understand that unit always requires two paths 
One is the path to the images and one is the path to the ground truth because your X is an image and Y or the labels are also an image, right? So that's why there's a relative path and then there's the images and then there's the ground truth. And uh, one way to figure out if, uh, you know, this was correct or not, you might see that there are these numbers which are getting thrown out. These are actually the maximum pixel values for the shrunken, uh, you know, original images. So ideally, these should be less than one. If not, you would know that you have some scaling issues that you have to address. And then we just summarize the, the unit model. And finally, we launch, you know, this is all of the layers that we have in the, in the unit. And then we, you know, launch the tensor board. And uh, this is, you know, how the tensor board is, is getting launched. And finally, um, let me keep it to say, um, you know, 40 epochs maybe and, and run this. Of course, if you want to run it for, for more, you, you definitely can. So as soon as you, uh, you know, run this now, you will see that, you know, it, it starts generating. And the, the first time tensor board is invoked, you will see that it says, you know, no dashboard is active. It is just because it hasn't been refreshed. So if you do refresh it, you'll see that it actually, uh, you know, the model starts getting uh, popped in. But if you want to see the runtime, you have to actually go to the tab called scalers. And scalers takes a little bit of time because, again, it has to wait for a few epochs to complete. You will start seeing, uh, you know, the, the, the plots popping up. So there's a loss and then there's an epoch accuracy, ideally. All right, so now that all of these, uh, you know, runs are, are complete, let's look at the tensor board. So this is how the tensor board looks like. I'll refresh it once so that um, you know you can see that this is how the the loss function has actually or the epochs the accuracy epochs has gone up while the loss function has actually uh, you know uh, come down pr pretty pretty good so you know in, in, ideally in this case uh, everything sh you know seems to have worked um, finally I am you know trying it on the test data set so uh, right now I'm just generating um, outcomes for all of the test images so for each and every one of the 62 test images so finally now that all of the test uh, you know results have been created i am going to be saving all of them in this one particular folder inside the the, the test uh, you know folder where um, all of the results will be you know particularly saved so um, let me just you know show you so this is the pred that got created and now you can actually see all of the images that are getting generated you see clearly the multi-class classification has worked because now you can um, you know see the the red lesions as well as the green uh, showing the bright lesions separately so this will just take some time you know to do run and now you'll be able to see that you know your outcome is actually correct uh, one uh, thing that I did wanted to point out in the in the code uh, before um, you know we, we finish this particular exercise is that in the code if you go to uh, you know model depth three and model depth four you will see that the loss function in in these is actually a binary cross entropy rather than categorical cross entropy. Now ideally for multi class um, you know classification you should keep uh, your loss function as um, categorical cross uh, entropy but in this case because the number of classes are pretty small it's just bright lesions and red lesions versus the background uh, binary cross entropy actually works pretty fine so uh, categorical cross entropy can actually uh, mislead the, the the convergence in this case so i would highly recommend using binary cross entropy loss if you're just using three classes like in the exercise uh, that we've shown so i'm hoping uh, with with this video everybody is now able to replicate this code base and use it for your own research so good luck and please do stay tuned